my father and I would be working together, we would send out letters to friends saying that our whiskey was available and this is the prices and we have a personalized bottle that would hand letter the label and so forth for you if you wanted that and the price was $14.50 a bottle or whatever and so we generated some business so Robin Jennings found that letter and said is this still good? <laughs> number one can I get the whiskey and number two is it still $14.50 a bottle? I like to I like redeem my certificate so to speak so uh, there have been a couple people that have done that just for I think one of them I think he was serious. <laughs> it kind of brings us into the aging topic you're responsible in the industry, whether you'll take credit for it or not, for the popularity of ultra-aged bourbons. You pinpointed this deliciousness in this ultra-aged product that, that people used to just throw away, right? Yeah, I think so. It's just our family always had older whiskey. The oldest Stitzelweller product was maybe 15 years old. It was on the market. There wasn't much of it. So it was something I enjoyed. But our whiskey is designed to be aged longer versus other brands out there. The weeded formula, which Obviously, as we use wheat instead of rye in our mash bill, and that's what my grandfather, Pappy, stuck with, tended to age the whiskey as long as our whiskey was gonna be aged uh, more gracefully so it didn't pick up as much wood and tannins from the barrel. And actually, if you taste our 10, 12, 15, 20-year-old, and even the 23, as the whiskey gets past 10 to 12 years old, and even to 15, it tends to smooth it out. Uh, younger whiskey has more of a bite to it, but is the barrel takes over, it does smooth out the whiskey quite a bit and introduces a whole lot more flavor profiles. Um, uh, Preston and I taste and the staff at Buffalo Trace in the lab taste every barrel before we bottle it. We don't have thousands of hundreds of barrels at a time. Um, so we would throw out a barrel that doesn't have the, the right flavor profile or might be a little bit off. So if we kept it in there, it would throw off the whole batch. Well, we're just thrilled to be able to offer the bourbon fans something. It's fun for us to be able to use the entire barrel. You know, we nothing goes to waste. It's very sustainable to be able to offer these barrel heads. A lot of times we age syrup in the barrels and then rinse the barrels out and then bring them back here and break them down and, and sell the heads and use the staves to make products. So it's, it's great to be able to use the entire barrel and nothing goes to waste. Yeah, it's good that they have a, an afterlife, so to speak, because we can only use barrels one time in the bourbon business. That's right. Um, so the used ones have to go somewhere, but I'm glad that uh, they can get cleaned up and hang, hang that head on some, somebody's wall in their bar or whatever and uh, enjoy it. You found that picture of your grandfather, Pappy, in a box in the basement, right? Yep, it was in a, actually going through some file cabinets um, somehow ended up in our basement and I found this black and white uh, eight and a half by 11 picture of Pappy smoking a cigar uh, that was taken I guess on his 85th birthday or something like that I and mean, I said wow this is cool I've never seen it before and I think maybe I'll I've got some 20 year old whiskey that been sitting around I haven't used it again wasn't sold at any other age maybe younger Pappy age will do the trick. Maybe yeah this will sell it. Uh, anything tried anything but um, an artist friend of mine came up with the label design and um, it became very iconic and my sister Sally put the picture on the cover of her book kind of as a, as a just a perfect way to uh, present the family but um, it was you know just kind of a, a lucky thing so um, it, it seemed to have stuck it was pretty incredible so um, a lot of fun.